Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the first morning session and I'm sure there's going to be plenty more things to learn this afternoon but before we let you go off and uh, meet up with your mentors we're going to have a little chat with someone who had a bit of a career transition himself. I thought going from banking to football broadcasting was a bit of a big leap but this guy's uh, shown me that you can do things a lot harder, take the and hits, be successful and take the, the hits, literally. Well. We've got Leon McKenzie here to have a chat with us. Good afternoon. Okay, Leon, so, so what happened? You just decided you fancied someone punching you in the face after a, a career in football? Um, not quite, because <laughs> it hurts. But um, no, my, I had 18 years in professional football, for those, that, uh, those of you that don't know. And when I finished football, I, let's just say I wasn't prepared as such. So I always believe that life circumstances change everything. And I certainly had a lot of those going away, you know, from football um, and not able to maybe, I'd say, cope with a lot the first time round. So at the age of 35, when I was a little bit lost direction wise, didn't really know what I was going to do uh, life after football. I uh, was struggling through like mental health issues. So uh, a big part of my life has been depression. So I was trying to cope with that the best way I could, but I wasn't really doing so well at the time. So when I jumped into a professional boxing ring, although it's uh, in my DNA and I'm from a boxing family, it was a um, transition in my life at the time where I literally just had to fight back. So although people saw me, oh, Leon McKenzie's jumped into a professional boxing ring, he used to play football and he's trying to do something different. I was actually, what most don't know is that I was actually trying to literally fight back in my own life. So um, although I did pretty good uh, and I was you know, fighting for titles and um, you know, really understanding that particular journey, the, the transition was the most important thing because I understood this time round, um, retiring from boxing last September, I was more prepared. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing uh, stuff with laps. Well, can you, well, I just want to say well done. Incredible and congratulations achievement, on yeah. making that transition, not just Thank in you. your career, but just as a man as well. You've just mentioned it. Um, now you are working with LAPS. Can you just tell us more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, LAPS is an online platform. LAPS stands for Life After Professional Sport. So um, I, bought, I believed in this company because I actually bought my own shares in it uh, because I believe in it so much. And what this company is doing is supporting athletes who are, you know, whether that's coming to the end of their careers or during, um, who are just not sure what to do. Um, we're an online platform. It's free to become a member, to, to sign on, become a member. If you look at our website, um, there's so many different ranges of careers there where you can look at different sections. Those that want to stay in sport, there's different job opportunities. Um, although, you know, one might not make it in a particular career, there's so many other jobs around within the, the areas that we are trying to sort of succeed in. So um, it's very important to, to have that support for young athletes. I didn't have it when I was playing, um, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that I'm involved with this. This has now enabled me to go and uh, speak in academy, speak to scholarship um, you know, section. Uh, I spoke at Liverpool Football Club uh, a few weeks back, which was very successful. And just trying to prepare them for like now rather than later. Um, obviously, I've sat where they, they've, where they were sitting at the time. And um, it was uh, important to get the message across, put on a workshop for them, interact. Did they listen? At first, no. But when I put up a, a goal against, I scored against Manchester United, they all soon leaned <laughs> forward. <laughs> and, I, and I put a few boxing things up as well. So, you know, at that age, uh, the youngsters are sometimes, you know, they just need to be educated. They need to be given a chance. Some might have a little bit of an attitude around the whole kind of area of, 
you know, just trying to like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm earning the right money at the moment, but they're just not educated enough to understand the whole process of, like I say, life circumstances change everything. And although we can be here one time, we can also be here the next day. So it can change just like that. So that's my uh, thought process around trying to prepare the future rather well, than later. You've proven that you can definitely do that. And you've also interviewed someone we've probably all heard of because you've, you've made a film as well, haven't you? And who, who did you interview for that? Yeah, I mean, this is another thing. So, you know, I believe in re reinvention. I believe um, to keep reinventing yourself all the time. And that way, you know, you'll, you'll never run out of ideas. One of this, uh, because of my journey in the football and the boxing transition, I had the opportunity to make a film, uh, football, boxing, and what I did was in that, that um, journey, I had a few ideas and I incorporated mental health awareness into this documentary, which has allowed me to go and interview other athletes who some have, uh, have struggled a great deal and some haven't. So I interviewed people like uh, Kelly Holmes, who was fantastic, um, Ricky Hatton, Frank Bruno, Alan Shearer, J the, the, list, the list goes on, but the one person, and I believe in the universe a lot, and the one person I was able to get a fantastic interview with was Dwayne Johnson. And how that came about was me literally writing an email, writing it from my heart, and um, I knew someone that worked on, a director that worked with the US sitcom uh, Ballers and Entourage, and I contacted him and I said, please, could I get an interview with uh, The Rock, as they, as they call him? Um, and I, I wrote him a heartfelt email. And he read that email, funny enough. Didn't think he would, because I'm a kid from Fulton Eve. <laughs> you know, uh, just, just thought, OK, he's not going to ever read it. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, push it that way. And he read it, and he got back to me. Uh, there was a message that came through early, in the early hours of the morning. And he loved my story, loved what I'm doing with this film, and said, like, you know what? Come to LA, flew me over, and my film crew, we went over. Uh, I went onto the baller set while he was actually working at the time. And he's an amazing man. He gave me 40 minutes of his time. Uh, the interview was fantastic. He's worth 180 million, but still has many, many you know, things within himself that he finds hard to deal with, which, which really stood out for me. Mm -hmm. So it never really comes down to money in the end. Um, so that would be a fantastic interview that is going to be in this film. And uh, look really I look forward yeah. to it. That's that is good. I'm not even, I, I can't even be mad at you for, <laughs> you know, interviewing The Rock, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. But you do have an incredible story and you mm -hmm. have a lot to give. So I just want to okay. add that he will be around. Um, yeah. Not The Rock. Yeah, please, um, not uh, The Rock. Not The Rock. No, no, please. Uh, <laughs> but Little Mackenzie, around, he'll I'm still around be around. I'm around so. for, for a little bit longer. So yeah. please, any, any young kids here today, um, please come and come up to me. Again, I can, uh, I can sign you up straight away. It's free to become a member. Just start looking. Start preparing now. Well, start it just goes to show one email and then, you know, you're yeah. in LA exactly. talking to The Rock. Exactly. So you never give up. Believe in yourself. Keep fighting, as you said, and that's Keep what's important. Yourself. Keep going, even yep. if you know you do get knocked down. Get back up. That's that's what My it's all about. Still, yeah. yeah. And Thank just quickly, much. I want just quickly. I've got one more question. Yeah. So Rio Ferdinand's going to get in the boxing ring. Yeah. Tell us quickly what, how you think that's going to go. <sighs> <laughs> And on that note... I had a feeling <laughs> that was going to be the response. Right, I'll, 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 I'll break it down quickly. Listen, Rio's not a young man, you know, boxing terms, but he is an athlete. Rio has gone through a lot with life circumstances. And when someone goes through a lot within their life and they're trying to hold on to something and they're trying to fight back for whatever reason, I will never knock a man that always tries to keep trying and is trying to reinvent himself again. Yeah. So I will never say he can't do what he's going to do, but what I will say is, is to keep his hands up. Because it's a, uh, you know, one punch can change everything. Yeah. 
Well, the well, bravery to just to even step in the ring, anybody who well does what's it. What's that saying about exactly. everyone's got a plan until they get hit in the face? Yeah, I think Mike Tyson like said, uh, yeah. yeah, until, you, <laughs> until basically you, yeah. get, you get hit. Well, we wish him luck right. anyway, obviously. But yeah. thanks yeah. for talking to us, Leon. It's, Anytime. You know, it's been Pleasure. brilliant. And obviously Fantastic it, event today. Yeah, um, it is. All of, you's, all of you behind it, you know, all of you here today, um, it makes it even more uh, special because things like this is what the whole industry, what sport needs. So please keep keep supporting. Thank you. Thank you.